we've had some feedback about lightly peated whiskey, and we need to talk. Why don't you take a seat? Hey, take, take a seat. Right there. Yep. Sit, 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 sit. Make yourself comfortable. Yeah? Good. Are you comfy? All right. Let's begin. This is Balvenie's 17-year-old peated whiskey. For those of you who know, Balvenie is from Speyside. Traditionally, it's a nice, fruity whiskey. This one has a bit of peat, which apparently is very controversial with some of you. We've done a lot of videos about lightly peated whiskey because I like lightly peated whiskey. And that's okay if you don't. That's all right. Everyone's tastes are different. But what I think is really cool about lightly peated whiskey is that it's not overpowering. It doesn't absolutely blast your senses. You get to taste a lot of different things. And don't get me wrong, I like a Lagavulin as much as the next guy. I don't know what inferior swill this is, but I ordered a Lagavulin. Maybe not as much as him, but I do like a Lagavulin. But there's something to me that's really enjoyable about a lightly peated whiskey. Why? Are children even allowed at this event? Nobody touches this but me. We'll tell you how to win this fantastic Balvini from our partner Dream Whiskies at the end of this video. So make sure you watch all the way through. Before we get into it though, let's talk about Balvini. Because Balvini is a great brand. You might have heard of it. It's the eighth most popular single malt in the world. So when I say you might have heard of it, I mean you've probably definitely heard of it. The Balvini is owned by William Grant and Sons which means it's part of the Glenfiddich family. When Glenfiddich was founded in 1886, it was the beginning of a huge upsurge in distilleries being built in the Speyside region. In fact, a lot of people were building their distilleries around Glenfiddich. So to preempt people taking over the Glenfiddich area, William Grant bought 12 acres of land adjacent to Glenfiddich. That land included Balvenny Farm, and Balvenie Castle. He didn't start distilling whiskey until 1893 because originally he just wanted the land. The 12 acres that William Grant bought includes Balvenie House. Balvenie House is really interesting. It was built by William Duff. Duffman is here to refill your beer. No relation. What? Thank you. Now, here's the story of Balvenie House. William Duff built Balvenie House in order to impress a girl because a rival suitor bought her a greyhound. I'm not making that up. I mean, I couldn't make that up. Some guy bought a girl that William Duff liked a dog, so William Duff bought her a house. Yeah, that's, that's a totally normal, everyday reaction. What the? That's ridiculous! This whole situation is pretty ridiculous, and it didn't end well for anyone. The girl was bitten by the greyhound and developed hydrophobia, fear of water. Medically speaking, fear of water is the lamest phobia. I mean, I, I don't really know why being bitten by a dog makes you afraid of water, but it does. That's how they die. So anyone that dies from rabies, they die because they're not drinking water, which is both comical and pathetic. You can't say that. Why not? No one dies from rabies. You can't say comical and pathetic. Um, I think I just did. In 2007, they started their Bottle Your Own Balvini program, which is really cool. So you go to the distillery and you put in a dog, which is a copper tube at the end of a rope, into the cask. And you can either bottle a sherry cask, a refill cask, or a bourbon cask, and well, make your own Balvenie, which is really cool. The dog is actually something that they've been doing for years at distilleries across Scotland. Like I said, it's this big copper tube that they would dip into the casks basically to steal whiskey. Obviously, 
completely illegal, and if they caught you doing it, they'd sack you. So they take this big copper tube and they put it down their trousers and they tie the rope to their belt so they can sort of walk into the distillery and then when no one was looking, dip it into the cask and then dip it out. It would then be a bit awkward when they go out on the town and girls would say, is that a dog in your trousers? Or are you just happy to see me? To which there was no appropriate response. Balvenie prides itself on doing everything in-house. They use their own malted barley, albeit a small proportion of what actually is used in the final product, and they, use, they do their own malting, albeit only about 10%. They also have their own coopers, and they do their own bottling on site. All of which is pretty cool. I really like the bottles, actually. They've changed a lot over the years. They used to put them out in Glenfiddich bottles, you know, those cool triangular ones, before they've come out with the new sort of stout looking champagne bottles. I think they're really cool. It doesn't really matter, obviously, because what we're here to talk about is what's inside the bottle, which is this. Now we were talking before about lightly peated whiskey, and I'm a big fan of lightly peated whiskey, which is exactly what this is. It's been aged for 17 years and is then finished in a peat cask, a cask that used to have peated whiskey from Tomantel which is where Balveni gets all of its peat from. And it gives it a really interesting layer. You have lots of whiskies that are finished in exotic casks. One of the best known Balvenies is one that's finished in a rum cask. But what's unique about this is that it's finished in a whiskey cask that had peat in it. So it just is really subtle with that peat, which again is what I like. If you don't like it, fine, but it's still worth trying, even though, well, this particular one has been discontinued, so you can't find it. So you probably can't try this particular one, unless you enter the competition and you win, which would be the best way for you to try it. Or you can just listen to me talk about it. No, that's, that's not what you want. You should probably go over to Dream Whiskeys and enter the competition for yourself. On the nose, it's quite citrusy and sweet, which is what you get from a typical Balvenie, typical Speyside whiskey. And then on the palate, it's really well-rounded, well-integrated. It has that sweetness coming through. The alcohol is perfectly subtle and layered. There's a really intense flavor coming through which again is something that I like about Speyside whiskeys. A lot of times you do get Speyside whiskeys that are sweet and a bit understated, but this Balvenie gives you a lot of honey, maybe some coconut coming through, really enjoyable, strong flavors, and you get that smattering of peat. It's a cool layer, it's a really interesting note in this whiskey, but it's not a peat forward whiskey. You would never mistake this for something out of Isla. It is very, very different. But again, that's what I like about whiskey. And if you're one of those people that says that only peated whiskeys are the best and that it needs to smack you across the face with peat, that's fine. I mean, it's not to my taste as much, but I still enjoy it. And these kinds of whiskeys, I think, are worth you giving a try too. Even if you're not a massive fan, even if all you want to drink is Laphroaig all day long, stuff like this is still good to try and expand your repertoire. It might even make you enjoy that Laphroaig even more. To enter the competition, all you need to do is click the link in our description and you'll go over to Dream Whiskey's website. There are about 12 or 13 different ways you can enter. So it's really easy and you can get multiple entries. You can subscribe to Dream Whiskey's mailing list. You can tweet about the competition. You can post it on Facebook. You can watch one of our videos. All of those things count as entries. And it's a great way to try something that's really unique and great for whiskey fans, particularly if you're someone who's in between liking Speyside and Isla whiskeys. This is a really cool one to try. Go into the competition. This is something you don't want to miss out on. 
If you're watching this video after July 2018, the competition's over and you probably didn't win. I'm sorry. This is really nice and it's a shame you didn't win. But there's some good news. We do a new competition with Dream Whiskies every month. So make sure you subscribe to our channel to know when the next one starts and good luck. This is a great whiskey. All the whiskeys that we do with Dream Whiskies are fun and interesting and will really expand your whiskey knowledge. Give this a try. Remember to subscribe to our channel. Just click the link below.